Hello, welcome to the solution of the first compilers challenge. Before I start, I want to make a correction to something I said in the problem statement episode. So in that video, I, I translated this infix notation expression to this uh, reverse Polish notation. After thinking about it, the solution doesn't really faithfully reflect the intention of what this infix notation says. Um, and also, I made a statement that whatever is the first operation here, in this case, uh, the times, it should go first. And that actually doesn't have to be the case. So I'm going to demonstrate that as well. So I'm going to start with 3 plus 4 times 5. If you look at this as an operation tree, the plus is the root operator. And then at the second level, we have the multiply. If we convert this expression tree, uh, which we will have more to talk about in later on challenges, but if we convert this expression tree into Polish notation, you as the operator, the plus, you would say, hey, first I want to put my two operands in front and then I will go after them. So my two operands are 3 and 4 times 5. So you would put 3 and then 4 times 5, which in turn you, you recursively do that. So that would be 4, 5 times. And then finally you put yourself the operator at the end. You might be asking me, but I thought you didn't need parentheses. Well, you actually don't. So you can remove the parentheses and this still works. So what's going to end up happening is we're going to push all three of these numbers onto the stack, 3 and then 4 and then 5. And then when we when it comes time to do the multiply, we're going to perform it on the top two numbers, which is 4 and 5. So poof, and we have 20. Then we move on to the plus, and then we do the last calculation. Poof. So that's how this works, and again, no parentheses needed. So that part of what I said is actually correct. Um, it's just that the 4 times 5 doesn't necessarily have to go in front like I did last time. And uh, as for the second example, uh, 3 plus 4 times 5, my translation last time was correct. This time, the tree is going to look like this. So the multiplication sign would say, hey, put my all prints in front. First is 3 plus 4, and then second operand, and then put myself. And then this is what we had last time. And again, we don't need the parentheses. So that's the correction I wanted to make now. Without further ado, let's get into the code challenge. So this is the reverse Polish notation code challenge that we're going to solve. Uh, if you haven't watched the problem statement episode, you should watch that first for some context before coming back to this video. If you have taken on this challenge on your own, I congratulate you. However, if you just want to enjoy the show, I'm going to review the solution right now. The way that lead code has structured this is um, we're going to have this solution class. I'm going to copy that into my code. I'm going to put pass for now. Um, just so that I can get the rest of the code set up without worrying about this. I think last time I tried, my Python doesn't support these type annotations, so I'm going to get rid of them. They're optional. I might need a newer version of Python or something, or maybe switch on a flag to turn them on. I'm not sure. So they gave me three examples. I'm going to go ahead and copy them. Um, in order to execute this method here, I'm going to need an instance of a solution. So I'm going to go ahead and create one. And then I'm going to call that method on the solution object. So eval RPN and pass in the tokens. That will get me a result and let's print it. And I'll do that for the next two examples as well. Okay, now I'm going to run this script, even though I haven't implemented any solution. This script should still run. The result should just be none. 
because I haven't implemented anything. And in Python, the default return value of a function is none. Yep. All right, now let's implement something. Uh, I'm gonna need a stack. Uh, I'm gonna represent the stack as a list in Python. And whenever I put things on the top of the stack, I'm gonna put it in the beginning of the list. So if I have a list, to insert in the beginning of the list, I'm gonna use insert at index zero. So let's say I wanna insert nine into the beginning of the list. Insert at index zero will do that for me. Uh, if I want to take an element off of the list from the beginning, I can do list.pop at the zeroth position like that. So now I'm gonna end up with the result being the element that I just popped off and I can see that that element has been popped off. It's no longer in the list. So that's what I'm gonna use for my push and pop operations. So this is going to be my push onto the stack and this is gonna be my pop of the stack. So I have a stack now. I'm going to loop through each token. And we're going to need to know whether the token is a number or a operator. Uh, there are two ways to do it. I can try to parse the number to see if it's a valid number. Or I can match the token against all known operators. Um, in this case, I think it would be slightly easier to try to match against the known operators. So I'm gonna make a list of the known operators. And then I'm gonna ask if the token is in that list of known operators. So basically if I went into here, we saw an operator, else I'm gonna assume this is a number because those are the only two types of things that can show up based on the statement of the problem. Okay, so now let's implement what should happen in the number. When we encounter a number, all we do is push it onto the stack. So like we said, uh, the way we push onto the stack is using the insert uh, method at index zero. So we'll say stack insert zero, the number, where in order to get the number, we're gonna use the int function to um, convert that numeric string into an integer. And we're doing integers only. We don't have to worry about floats uh, based on the problem statement. Each operand may be an integer or another expression. An operand might be the result of another computation, but, but basically we can only have integers. So that's numbers. How do we handle operators? We're gonna pop the first two things off of the stack and then do the operation based on which operator, which of these four operators it is, do the appropriate operation. And then we're going to take the result of the operation and push it back onto the stack. So let's pop the two operands off of the stack first. Again, we're gonna use this pop at index zero to pop them off. So operand one is gonna be stack.pop at index zero. Operand two is also going to be stack pop at index zero. After that, we're gonna do the operation. So we'll just say if the token is plus, we're gonna, the result is operand one plus operand two. Else if token is minus, result is operand one minus operand two. Else if token is multiplied, result is operand one times operand two. And then else if token is divide, result is operand one divided by probably integer division operand two else L will raise an exception. I will say invalid. So this should never happen uh, if I have coded this correctly, but 
you know, you never know, I might make a mistake. So once I have done this, we should push the result back onto the stack using this technique again. Okay, that should be it. Um, at the last thing to do is just return the first item of the stack. And uh, I think that's the algorithm, more or less. I have a syntax error on line 17. I'm missing a colon. Try again. Okay, 9, 4, and negative 198. 9 is correct. 4 is not correct. It should have been 6. And negative 198 is also not correct. Let's do one at a time. We're going to try to fix the answer for example number 2. Um, so I'm going to comment out. One and three. I'm gonna work on example number two. Uh, I'm gonna switch to Py Rewind, which is a customized version of Python that I made to allow for time traveling debugger. So I'll be able to use the time traveling debugger to debug the problem. Uh, so I'm gonna debug it like so. So I can go here, jump right to here, and I can go into this function. Um, so, and I can look at the variable on the right-hand side here. Let me look at what the tokens are. So the first three tokens are uh, numbers. All right, so I'm expecting all three of the numbers to just go onto the stack. So here it inserted one onto the stack. Let me look at the stack. So stack is here. So I pushed four into it. So I should expect 13. Yeah, there it is and five to go onto it. Now we're actually gonna see an operator. And what's the operator? Um, the token, so we see a divide. So we're gonna take two operands off of the stack. So watch the stack. So one came off, another one came off, and they came on to these variables called operand one and operand two, and presumably we're gonna do this operation to it. So what's the result? Zero, five divided by 13, integer division, which is zero. Is that what sh we should get? Let me see the explanation here. They're not doing five by 13. Instead, they're doing 13 divided by five. That tells me I did it in the wrong order. So maybe I should do operand two divided by operand one instead. And I would assume the same goes for subtract. The plus and multiply don't really matter order-wise, so I'm going to leave those alone. And I'm going to try again. Now I get the result 6, which is correct. Okay, let me test out all of the examples one more time. 9, 6, and 12. So 9 is correct, 6 is correct, 12 is still not correct. So uh, let's go in and debug that. I will comment out 1 and 2. Okay. All right, so I'm going to go down here, step into the function, and you look at what the tokens are. Oh, there's a lot of tokens. Okay. So we have four numbers at the beginning. Um, I'm just gonna go through and see them all pushed onto the stack. So 10, six, nine, three. And now we have an operator plus. So it's gonna take off three and nine off of the stack and add them together to get 12. That seems right. Push it onto the stack. So now 12 is on the stack. So it's are we correct? 9 plus 3 is 12. So that looks correct. Keep going. Next operation should be multiply it by negative 11. So let's see if that happens. We just put negative 11 onto the stack. And now I have negative 11 and 12 as operands. And we're doing a multiply. So the result is negative 132, and we're putting that under the top of the stack. Is that correct so far? Yes, we have negative 132. 
the next operation after that should be 6 divided by negative 132. So let's see if that happened. Um, okay, 6 and negative 132. So operand 2, 6. Operand 1, negative 132. Looks correct. The result is negative 1. Is that correct? So 6 divided by negative 132 is 0. Not negative 1. That's weird. So in Python, <laughs> 6 integer divide negative 132 is negative 1. 6 normal divide negative 132 is negative 0 0.04545 repeating. Looks like what Python did with the integer divide is it floored it. But lead code is expecting a 0. It is expecting it to be ceilinged instead of floored. Oh, here, note that division between integers should truncate toward zero. <laughs> As I understand it, the integer division always floors, I believe. So it's equivalent to doing that. We might need to import the math library here. From math import floor and see. We may need ceiling as well because if it's a negative number, we need to ceiling it. So here's what I'm going to do. If the result is greater than zero, we're going to floor it. Else we're going to ceiling it. So that it's always coming towards zero. If I ceiling zero, that'll be okay, right? So I think this is okay. Let's test this. 22. Okay, let's retest all of the uh, examples. Okay, we have 9, 6, and 22. Cool. I'm going to try to verify it on the lead code website using their verifier. So I just paste it in here. Hit run code that runs their basic example. Okay, that passed. And then if I click the submit, it'll run it against a larger batch of examples. So, and if that passes, I got the challenge. Nice. Uh, the performance is, I guess, not great. That's not really the point of this exercise. Um, the point of this exercise is figure out how a stack machine works. Uh, which is the thing you're implementing when you're trying to evaluate the reverse Polish notation operations. Congratulations if you made it this far. In future challenges, we're going to build upon this and make something even more interesting.